Welcome to the video on solving exponential logarithmic equations. The skill objectives for this video are the first one is to solve exponential equations, second one to solve logarithmic equations, and the third one is then to going to be to solve application problems involving these types of equations. The conceptual objective that we really want to focus on here is understand how log and exponential equations are solved using properties of one-to-one -one functions and inverses. It's key on this one to recognize that logs, the log function and the exponential functions are one-to-one. -one. So if you remember what that means is graphically, they will be always increasing or always decreasing. Uh, and so therefore, once, it's, once they are one-to-one, -one, then we also know the inverse exists as well. Let's start out by taking a look at the one-to-one -one properties and inverse properties. With one-to-one -one properties, we have two of them, and it's important to keep these in mind. Uh, first one is if b to the x equals b to the y, if and only if x, x equals y. And then the next one is that the log base b of x equals log base b of y if and only if x equals y. In other words, when you're working with both exponential log functions, if you have an, a situation where I have two uh, exponentials that are equal to each other, where the bases are the same, then I know that their exponents have to be equal to each other. And the same thing with the logs. If, the, if I have one log uh, equal to another and they have the same base, then I know that the things inside of them must be equal to each other as well. The other one we have is the inverse properties that we talked about last time uh, in, in section 3.3. Those are going to all help us to go and solve these. Because keep in mind, as I mentioned in class, when we are solving an exponential function, the idea is I can't solve for it when the variable is part of the exponent. I have to get that, ex that variable out of the exponent. And both the one-to-one -one property and the inverse properties here help me do that. Also, when a variable is, if I'm trying to solve a log, where the variable is inside the log, I can't solve for that variable until it's out of the log. And so in this case right here, that, that uh, the one-to-one -one property here and our inverse property, those help us get that out of the log as well. So those are going to be big things that we're going to be working with on here, especially these one-to-one -one properties. When we go through and we're solving both logarithmic and exponential uh, functions, uh, the book classifies them ver as simple and complicated. Okay, when you're dealing with the exp so what we'll do when we're working with these uh, as we go through them, I'll deal with the simple case first, and then we'll look at the complicated first case after that. In the simple case for solving exponential equations, really what you want to do is you're going to be, you will recognize a simple, the simple version if you, when you notice that both sides of the equation are powers of the same base. I can rewrite them as powers of the same base. So what I want to do when I'm solving uh, an, a simple exp exponential equation, if you will, uh, is one, write both sides of the equation as a power of the same base. Number one, that's the key thing. And then I can use that first one-to-one -one property, the, b to the if b to the x equals b to the y, then x equals y. I'm going to use that one-to-one -one property to just tell me, sit there and say that the exponents have to be equal to each other. And then I'm able to solve for the variable. So those are the things I want to do when it's a, that simple version. And I'm, you know, the simple is how the book describes it. And it's simple because of the fact that both sides are written as powers, can be written as powers of the same base. Let's take a look at an example of this. In our example, I have 1 fifth to the x equals 125 to the 3x minus 4 power, right up there. Well, in this case, I recognize that both 1 fifth and 125 happen to be powers of 5. 1 fifth is 5 to the negative 1, so I have 5 to the negative 1 raised to the x power equals 125 is 5 to the third, so it's going to be 5 to the third raised to the 3x minus 4. When I go through, and remembering my rules for exponents, that when I uh, have a power to a power, I multiply the exponents, I get that this is going to be 5 to the opposite of x equals 5 to the 3 times the 3x minus 4 is going to be 9x minus 12. 
Well, now I've written this as powers of the same base. We have both of our bases here are five. And so since they have the same base, I can use that one-to-one -one property that tells me that since the bases are the same, I know the exponents have to be equal. So I can say that the opposite of x equals 9x minus 12. And then, then it's just a process of solving that. And so when I do this one, I will subtract 9x from both sides. And when I do that, I get negative 10x equals negative 12. And then to solve it for x, I just divide by negative 10. I get x equals negative 12 over negative 10, which equals 6 over 5. So this is an example of what, what we mean by that the simple uh, version that the book talks about. These are also the ones that they're going to tell you when if they tell you they want you to go through and solve this exactly, uh, solve it by hand if it's something you're supposed to do without a calculator, this is the situation you're dealing with. You are going to have, you're going to have to look and determine that which, what, what base I want to write each side as a power of. Now let's look at the complicated exponential equations. Now in this situation here, what, what's happening is that the both sides of the equation cannot be written as powers of the same base. That's why we call it the complicated. Uh, at least they, they refer to it as complicated. I would not say it's necessarily more complicated to do this, but it has, it's because of that relationship. So the first thing I want to do when I'm working on these is I want to isolate the exponential on one side. I want to get what that exponential part by itself uh, on either the left or to the right. It doesn't matter which one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same logarithm of both sides. Okay, now I can use whatever base I want. Um, generally speaking, I could take common log or natural log. I tend to do natural log, and in fact, if you look at the... Uh, um, Look at what they talk about, the explanation in the book. They actually refer to it just do, using the natural log there. But please keep in mind, it doesn't matter which one you use. It's not going to make a difference. After you go through and take the log, you can use the log properties and start to simplify that. And then you go and just, you need to solve for the variable. You need to get the variable by itself. Let's take a look at an example of this. We have two examples we're going to see. The first one I've already written out. The second one we'll talk a little bit about, and then we'll uh, have you work on it as well. In this case, uh, in example one, I have 2 plus 4 to the 2x equals 17. Well, I need to isolate the exponential. That means I need to get the 4 to the 2x by itself. And I do that by subtracting 2 from both sides. So I get 4 to the 2x equals 15. Now I go through and I take the natural log of both sides. So I take the natural log of 4 to the 2x equals the natural log of 15. Now by the log property, remember that property 7 from last time dealt with exponents. I can take that exponent right here and I can move that out in front. So that becomes 2x times the natural log of 4 equals the natural log of 15. And then what I need to do is get the x by itself. And I do that by dividing by... Uh, everything but the x. So I'm going to divide by 2 times the natural log of 4. So when I do that, the 2's will drop off, the natural log of 4's drop off, and I'll just be left with x equals the natural log of 15 over 2 times the natural log of 4. At this point, I can go and put that into my calculator, and when I did that, I came up with the fact that x would be equal to or about equal to, 0.9767. Now let's take a look at example two. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit different. Um, you're going to go. I want you to go through and uh, isolate the exponential, then take the natural log of both sides, and then use those log properties to simplify that. Um, something good does happen here. Okay, so. Keep, them, keep that in mind. So start out by going through, isolating that exponential, then take the natural log of both sides, and simplify that using the log properties. Once you get done, once you're ready, come on back, and we'll go through this problem together. Welcome back. As you can see, I've finished up this problem, too. Uh, in this case, what we have to do, the first thing I have 
on this one is I need to go and divide by 5. I need to isolate the exponential. So I divided both sides by 5. So I get e to the 2x minus 1 equals 7. And now we take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of e to the 2x minus 1 equals the natural log of 7. Well, here is where good things happen. Remember, one of the inverse properties, when I, take, when I take the log of an exponential where they have the same base, they cancel each other out, and I'm only left with the exponent. And in this case, natural log is log base e. So the natural log of e to the 2x minus 1 just becomes 2x minus 1. And again, that allows me to get that, act, that variable out of the exponent. Now I can solve it. So I have the natural log of, or I have, not the natural log, I have 2x minus 1 equals the natural log of 7. And at this point, I need to solve it for x. So I go through, I add 1 to both sides, and then divide by 2. I get x equals the natural log of 7 plus 1 divided by 2. Please remember, when you do this on your calculator, uh, the, the, it is the natural log of just 7. So 7 is the only thing in that natural log. The plus 1 is outside of that natural log. So when I put that into the calculator, uh, I will get that x is about equal to 1.473. Now let's take a look at logarithmic equations. Again, like the exponential, we are going to be looking at the book classifying them as simple and complicated. I'll call it type 1, type 2. In the first one, is, which is simple, what, what, what that we mean by that is that we're going to have logs on both sides of the equal sign here. So in this case, I have log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of 3 equals log base 2 of 4x minus 5. I have logs on both sides of the equal sign. In the complicated version, what we really have is just logs on one side of the equal sign. The other side doesn't have any logs. So the way we're going to go through and proceed with these in both cases, you're going to have to use the log properties that we worked with last time, particularly properties 5, 6, and 7, to go and combine logs together. Okay, so let's take a look at, the, at how we go about solving the simple version right now. When we're solving the simple type, one of the, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to combine the logarithms on each side of the equal sign using the log property. So basically what I want to do is I want to get that problem written as a single log on each side. Okay, then we're going to use the one-to-one -one properties to equate the arguments. In other words, once we have it as a single log on each side, I can then say the things that are inside the log function have to be equal to each other. I can then solve for the variable. Now, when you're working with the logs, it's also very important that you check your answers. Because, of, because we know that, I, that when you take the log, you cannot take the log of a negative and you can't take the log of zero. You need to determine if some of the solutions you find actually make the go back to the original problem and make make us do something we're not able to do where we get a log of a negative or a log of zero so you have to check and make sure you eliminate any of the extraneous solutions that might come up when you're solving a logarithmic equation let's look at an example on this one we'll use the problem that we had uh, uh, when we're in the, the, on that first slide with the logarithmic functions solving the logs we're going to take log base 2 of x uh, minus log base 2 of 3 equals log base 2 of 4x minus 5. So I'm going to use the log properties to combine these two. Now this is a subtraction of two logs. So I know that's going to be the log of the quotient. So it'll be written as this whole thing here is just going to be log base 2 of x over 3 equals log base 2 of 4x minus 5. Also, please remember this, this question came up uh, last time in terms of using the log properties to combine things, that when we're working with these things, we will always have the same base, or you should have the same base there in order to use these properties. At this point now, I have it a log on each side. It's written as a single logarithm on each side. So I have log base 2 of this equals log base 2 of this. So I know the x over 3 is equal to the 4x minus 5. So at this point now, it's just solving an algebraic equation. I multiply both sides by 3. I get uh, x equals 12x minus 15. Subtracting uh, 12x from both sides, I get a negative 11x equals negative 15. 
and then divide by negative 11, I get x equals 11 over 15. Now at this point, what I need to do is I do need to check that. So what I'd like you to do right now is go through. Now the only one we have to worry about is really the 4x minus 5. Because this one right there, if I put 11 over 15 in there, that's not a problem. Because I can take the log of a positive number in 11 over 15, or 15 over 11, sorry, is positive. But what I'd like you to do is put 15 over 11 into the 4x minus 5 and see if you get a positive or negative result. So pause the video, do that calculation, see what comes up. Welcome back. When you did this thing, you should have come up that uh, with the 4x minus 5, when I put 15 over 11 in, you should have come up with a positive 0.4545. So in this case, uh, this, this answer would be the 15 uh, over 11 is the solution to this logarithmic equation. Now let's look at the complicated type. Okay, what we're going to want to do in this case, remember we only have logs on one side of the equal sign. So in this case, I want to go through and I want to combine all the logs uh, on the one side. Make sure I combine it into a single logarithm. And I want to isolate that logarithmic function. Then the next thing I want to do at this point, because I'm going to have a log, some log equal to a number, I am all set to use that definition of that log. Remember y equals log base b of x if and only if b to the y equals x, that one. We've seen that a number of times. You're going to use that to rewrite the expression into its exponential form. Once I do that, the variable is going to be out of the log function. I'm going to be able to solve for the variable. And again, we need to check our solutions to eliminate any extraneous solutions that are there. Here's the example problem that we did uh, that we saw earlier. Log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of x plus 2 equals 4. Again, using the log properties to combine that. That's going to be log base 3 of x times x plus 2 equals 4. So I get log base 3 of x squared plus 2x equals 4. Now, this is where I'm going to use that definition. Log base 3 of this equals 4 if and only if what's inside the log function, the x squared plus 2x, equals 3 to the fourth power, which is 81. Now at this point, I'm dealing, looking at a quadratic. I'm going to subtract the 81 from both sides, and so I have x squared plus 2x minus 81 equals 0. In order to solve that one, I'm just going to have to use the quadratic formula. So I let x equals the negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 81 over 2. When I plug that in and do the calculator work with that one and reduce it, I come up that x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 82. And in this case, when I look at that, I go through and, and work with those, that will be approximately equal to these two values, the 17.111 and negative 19.111. So the next thing I have to do is check my solution, see if there's any issues with these. And what I have in this case on here, um, I know that I'm dealing with the log base 3 of x plus the log base 3 of x plus 2. Right away, because of that, I know the negative 19 over 11 is one that I cannot use because I can't take a log of a negative number. So this is an extraneous solution, and I'm just going to ignore that one. The only solution I have on this one is 17.111. This now concludes our video on how to sol on solving exponential and log equations. Uh, in class, we'll take a look at a couple of uh, story problems, and we'll also talk a little bit more about some of these other some of these uh, types of problems here and what the way to approach those. So. Um, I hope, every, I hope you are comfortable with this, and we'll see you uh, at, in our next class.